One of the early critical decisions in making a satellite is determining what kind of an orbit do you even want. And this will affect a lot of different things, such as how many satellites you actually need to accomplish what your goal is, how big of a satellite do you need, how expensive of, uh, will the launch be, and will the satellite be in itself, and, and many, many other related things. So this is one of the crucial things to determining pretty early on in the process. So there are a number of different parameters that define an orbit. We're going to talk right now only about some of the key things to determine early on. Now the key things to determine early on is what kind of an inclination do you want and what kind of an apoasis and periapsis do you want. Apoasis is the highest point in an orbit. Periapsis is the lowest point in the orbit. Inclination is what is the angle with respect to the equator. And why that matters will, will show up a little bit later, but all of these things are, are crucial to determine pretty early on. And this is a diagram from a patent that Google is using to try to figure out their best ways to do satellite internet. And you can see here that they have two different constellations of satellites that they're proposing, some that are lower than others. The higher you are, the bigger of a footprint that you reach. This makes sense. You're standing on top of a building, you can see further. If you're on top of a mountain or a giant skyscraper, you can see even further. In an airplane, you can see even further. So it makes sense. The higher you are, the more area that you can see. And when you can see more area, you have more that you need fewer satellites to cover the entire globe. And you're also able to have ground stations space further apart. You have more satellites that can see them. On the other hand, they're also further away. And further away can cause some issues with resolution for cameras, for the payloads, for the resolution, for the communication type payloads. It doesn't make as much of a difference for manned, but it's more expensive to get into a higher orbit, which does make a difference. So the constellation continues, or the patent continues with a diagram of the constellation of satellites they're wanting. And the reason why I wanted to show this is notice this little ring up here. The reason this ring exists is because of the inclination of a satellite. If you had an inclination of a perfect 90 degrees, all of the satellites would pass over the poles and it would be more or less continuous. Well, this constellation that they're proposing it looks like it's maybe a 55 to 60 degree uh, inclination because you can see it just uh, covers well into Canada. The inclinations roughly corresponds to the latitude. And when you're here, you'll be able to see about 15 degrees of a field of view. So they might be able to just barely reach the pole with this kind of or altitude, which may or may not be what they're trying to do. So you can see here that the inclination makes a huge difference. One other thing to notice is notice that the frequency of satellites is higher near the top and the corresponding thing at the bottom of a constellation of satellites this, like this. You'll spend most of the time in something relatively close uh, in latitude to the inclination of what you're, you're aiming for. So if you want to concentrate more over, say, the United States, then you might want a 40, 45 degree inclination. Whereas if you're trying to concentrate in Europe, Europe as a rule is a little bit further north. Maybe you want a 55 degree inclination so that you can hit that better. If you want to hit the poles, you have to have something close to 90 degrees. So that's part of why Iridium, which does try to do a completely global or satellite network, they have to have an inclination that is close to 90 degrees. I think they're sun synchronous, so they're about 98 degrees, but it, uh, something along those lines. It's within 10 degrees of of, uh, of the equator of the poles of 90 degrees. And also, one of the things to notice is that these holes get to be greater at the equator. The higher the inclination, the more gaps you'll have in the equator. If you happen to be lucky enough to live in an equatorial country and you want to have low Earth orbiting satellites that visit you, you can do it with one plane of satellites and it'll work perfectly. 
if you want to do with something that's higher if you don't live near the equator you have to have quite a few more so from the perspective of space living near the equator is a huge advantage now one of the biggest differences like i said in what kind of orbit is the size of the satellite so we have here a couple of of payloads that spacex launched on the left we have a group of 10 different low earth orbiting satellites for the iridium constellation and on the right, we have the a geosynchronous satellite. I forget which one exactly it was that SpaceX launched. So this bottom payload adapter is the same in both instances. Just notice how much larger a geosatellite has to be because the geostationary orbit is actually quite far away from Earth. You require a much, much larger satellite for... You have to have uh, bigger propulsion. You have to have bigger solar panels. Uh, part of the, the propulsion is, is uh, they're responsible for maintaining the orbit. Uh, to maintain a geostationary orbit requires a significant amount of fuel every year. You have to have more powerful antennas because you're further away, which means you have to have larger solar panels and so on and so forth. And it just gets to be quite a bit larger. They can actually stack two geocommunication satellites on top of each other, but they usually don't try to do more than that, whereas it's pretty common to launch 10, even sometimes more, low-Earth orbiting satellites with a single launch. As I mentioned, the propulsion needs are quite a, a major factor. If you have a low-Earth orbiting constellation of satellites, you don't need a whole lot of propellant. You need a little bit on board to get it to where it is. You need a little bit to be able to deorbit the satellite when it has reached its end of life. But you don't really need a whole lot to on day-to-day -day operations. You'll need some for collision avoidance and for just basic station keeping, but they tend to be relatively easy. If you're in low Earth orbiting, or if you're in geostationary orbit, excuse me, then... Uh, you'll need quite a bit more. So this is actually the, the Dawn satellite, which was visiting an asteroid. But many geostationary satellites these days have an ion engine similar to, to this, and we'll explain more about what that is later. But they use it to save on the fuel costs and make their satellites ultimately smaller and therefore considerably cheaper. And these satellites, they're able to... Uh, to stay in orbit for, for much longer because they're able to use this fuel. So that's another thing to consider in the orbit is how much fuel will you have to allocate. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about how you go about selecting an orbit for a satellite. For the most part, I most of my knowledge tends to, to deal with the low Earth orbiting satellite realm, but I, I have some basic knowledge of some of the other things as well. Uh, let me know whatever questions you guys have, and thank you much for joining me on this journey. Take care and keep on tracking. We'll see you next time.